And this demand for efficiency and effectiveness is driving a demand for marketing automation solutions. Um, these are solutions that are, have platforms that are provided by companies such as Eloqua or Marketo or Silverpop. They are a way to help the marketer have a turnkey end-to-end -end demand generation system with accountability at each aspect of the system to help maximize the efficiency of the sales organization, to help maximize the effectiveness of the marketing communication. And um, these um, systems help allow the marketer to accomplish more with less. At the current organization, we use an analogy called the B2B high-tech lead farm to talk about the three critical areas of demand generation, and we're going to cover those uh, now. The first area is external and internal demand generation. This is where companies are maximizing their inquiry harvest through pinpoint targeting, compelling offers, and using the technology infrastructure to collect digital body language that will help us drive subsequent and relevant conversations as part of the sales development process. The second aspect is the, is the data management process. No longer can marketers separate data processes from sales lead management processes. Here, technology solutions are able to help automate critical data steps such as data hygiene, data appending, lead scoring, and lead routing, all designed to create the effectiveness of the sales organization to do what Dan was referring to, which is not send the wrong lead to a sales organization or a non-qualified lead to the sales organization until it's ready. The third area in a farm is the actual sales funnel itself. It is the nurturing process, the prospect qualification process, and the opportunity harvesting, and the interrelationship of those three. And what we're finding with marketing automation solutions, what we're finding with the new types of buyers, what we're finding in the new self-service environment is a need to fill up the sales funnel all across um, in each stage of the sales funnel. So I call this kind of the portfolio approach to demand generation, where we don't know where people are in the buying process, but we do know is that we want to get some people who are early in the funnel, we want to get some people who are deeper in the funnel, we want to get some people who are really highly qualified, and then we want our marketing programs, our marketing communication programs, our automation um, in our email marketing to advance them through, squeeze them through so they ultimately become sales qualified and ready to be moved on for opportunity harvesting. With this portfolio approach to demand generation, it means we need to have a range of programs and a range of offers that cover the buy cycle. We need offers that are attracting people in the early interest stage who are just trying to find out what the right solution is for their organization someone who's in the learn stage who's trying to figure out what is the right solution for them and what's the right company that's, that's going to be an ideal for them. And then we need offers that are deep in the buy cycle, evaluation. How do I make a decision? How do I determine what's right for me? How do I buy? And then, of course, classic closing offers. So let me show you some proven programs that are working today, some that are classic, old school, and some new school offers. One of my favorite classic old schools that's still working today, both online and offline, is the lead generation survey approach. This is a five to ten question survey approach that uh, identifies whether people are in pain, um, whether they're planning to buy, um, uh, what types of products they're looking for, what their current satisfaction levels are. This is a great program to fill the top of the funnel that gives you a fair amount of data that allows you to qualify should you pass them on to telesales or should you move them into a nurturing process. Still classic, still working today, and I know a lot of you ask the question, do white papers still live? Are white papers still important? The answer is yes. Um, classic educational information is still important in B2B selling. What is happening in that world of B2B white papers is they're changing, and I think we're going to see some more video um, white papers coming on board. We're going to see shorter articles that are happening in different types of formats and on social media. But the most important thing about any form of educational lead generation it's the title of your content that is intriguing and powerful and compelling that attracts the right type of buyer for you. The third type of offer that is working is the one-to-one -one offer that is highly personalized and highly um, relevant to just you, your company, and your interest. And these are dynamically assembled online or through variable data printing, and they're a result of a potential visitor revealing critical information about their business, their organization, and their issues that you can then assemble uh, a piece of content that helps them understand 
how your solution is right for them. Now, this just came out a few months ago from Marketing Sherpa, and I found it absolutely fascinating. It challenges the fact that what B2B buyers want is not what most marketers think they want. If you see on the left hand of your screen, marketers think that buyers want educational content and research reports, the sort of classic old school I was just talking about, but the statistics show us that they're really looking for news and information and buyer comparison guides. And that, that's very interesting because the buyer is saying to himself, listen, I can get a lot of my own information through my Google searches, but help me understand why you're the right solution. New trends we're deploying are what we consider non-branded category comparison sites. These sites might be for an industry of dental products or um, cardiology products where several marketers are all participating on the site. It is non-branded, but there's a tremendous amount of content that is both printed content, downloadable content, and video content that generates leads for the various marketers. The key thing about these sites is they are designed for search um, results. They get high organic search results, helping you get the right types of buyers who are looking for your solutions to come into your sales funnel. And then the last thing that we're seeing a lot of um, important trends on are virtual events and virtual trade shows. I think there's a big momentum, especially with the recession on, to provide relevant, timely information to potential buyers without anybody having to travel or go anywhere. And these types of virtual conferences and events are becoming more and more sophisticated. Now, several of you asked questions about what's going on with lead generation from a social media perspective, and I'd like to conclude with just two cases for you now. Uh, the first one comes from Symantec. Symantec is in the uh, network security business. Um, this is their some, uh, Facebook fan page. It is well-designed. It is well-organized. It is a good example of a corporate fan page. They have the various tabs covering the types of content from their wall to their Twitter feed to their uh, Flickr photos and a fair amount of content that they're posting up every day on their wall with good participation from their fans. But what you notice here, what I thought was very good, is they have an excellent integration between their Twitter posts content that they're uh, making available and data capture. Here what you're seeing from their Twitter, they're announcing a new piece of content. When you hit the download link, you come to a landing page, which does an excellent job of selling you on the value of this content, what you're going to see, what you're going to discover, what you're going to reveal when you, when you download the content. As soon as you try to click the download, you see at the bottom, it takes you to a data capture page, which, uh, which is a pretty extensive data capture page. And only until you fill out the data capture can you access this premium content. So I think this is a great example of an integration between social media and lead capture, and I'm sure we're going to see more of this going forward. Now, the last example I'd like to leave you with is from HP. I know this is a more consumer example, but I think this is a good example of a tie-in between a user-generated content promotion and lead capture and then nurturing follow-up. So here HP is um, got a cross tie-in with the upcoming um, Sex and the City uh, movie, uh, Sex and the City 2. They have a promotion that's going on that you tell us why you're qualified and um, for this laptop and why this is the right laptop for you, and you can win it. So you come in through the promotion page. You get a landing page. You get in, and they talk about uh, what the promotion is. They then have you uh, join up and provide your email. You have to become a fan to participate. And as soon as you become a fan, you're providing your email. They then have you provide your user-generated content, either through a video or a written communication about why um, you should qualify for a laptop and what's the right laptop for you. You then hit submit, which puts you into the contest. And within a few seconds, you now get email from HP on products and services they have for you to buy. So I think this is another excellent example of the tie-in of lead generation to social media and putting them together that we'll see more trends in the future. All right, I'm going to come back and wrap up with Q&A, but Denny, you're up. Let's take it from there. Thank you, Russell. I appreciate it. I want to talk a little bit more about how the whole value of lead management. You know, in a difficult economy that we're talking about, that we've just been coming through and hopefully coming out of, it's clearly there's a big, big focus on return on investment. And marketing is constantly trying to demonstrate that the investments that are made in marketing are really showing up in return on investment to their executive staff. A key management, lead management, is really a key to delivering return on investment. How important is it? IDC survey of chief marketing officers that responded, they rated lead management as more important than brand awareness, online, and even interactive marketing. It's strategic to the business. Aberdeen Research said that of best-of-class companies, 91% use 
use lead management as a strategic initiative. So how do you do it? Is lead management automation, is that the answer? So let's talk a little bit about marketing automation systems. They're clearly the hot industry today. Uh, there's lots of vendors promoting a wide range of capacities from database to lead scoring to nurturing to workflows and integration with different CRM systems. The whole sales game is really changing, as, as mentioned by Dan and, and, uh, and Russell, and that is the prospects are really determining their vendors based on web research well before they may be even ever talking to a salesperson. Laura Ramos of uh, Forrester Research said, Lead management automation can help marketers connect with buyers long before the first sales call. It can make that selling effort much more efficient. 78% of the best-in-class organizations are going to be integrating CRM and marketing automation technologies. And what's the payoff of that? According to Forrester, uh, perceived marketing effectiveness using lead automation is up 36%. Sales productivity is increased by 26%. And the time to close has been reduced for a sale by 16%. Very impressive statistics. So if it's good, to go to the next slide, if it's so good, why do we have 80% of the leads still being dropped by sales? 90% of sales collateral still being unused. 80% of the deals were not influenced by marketing at all. And here's one that's really scary. is It's an estimated total cost of winning a net new enterprise customer using a direct sales force is almost a half a million dollars. So marketing automation has got some challenges to go with it as well. It's really more than equipment. It, it, technology alone is not going to solve this problem. They've got some great capacities out there and great functionalities, but many companies have installed the latest marketing automation and the best CRM systems, but they're still not satisfied with the results. IDC says there's a strong technology to support a lead management process, but the right technology is critical and must have a process to make it work. In best in class, you really need a formalized lead management process that aligns sales and marketing to effectively leverage the automated lead management technologies. So what's missing? It's really what's missing is the process. Again, Laura Ramos really said, B2B marketers adapt technology, but there isn't really a wealth of best practices for lead scoring, for customer profiling, lead nurturing programs for them to draw upon. And this really holds the adoption back more than the lack of technical capability of the equipment vendors. In the Cirrus Decisions Conference last week, uh, one of the quotes was, technology will never demonstrate sufficient return on investment without a focus on sales process and sales skills. Lead management really equals the bottom line. Uh, if you have effective lead management, you're going to get a higher close rate. Firms with mature lead management processes close a much higher percentage of their marketing leads. Of all of the B2B out, uh, firms out here surveyed, 47% of them are closing less than 4% of the marketing leads. 35% of the firms that have effective mature lead management processes are closing 10% of their leads or more. That's two and a half times higher lead closure rate because of the fact that they have a really effective lead management process. So what is an effective mature lead management process? It's really a, a collection of specialized application and processes that help them manage leads, nurture, score, and route those leads. But automation really requires alignment. The number one process or process issue in sales and marketing today is really getting alignment between the two organizations. Today, you have to have the marketing automation capabilities to really make the systems work. As Russell described in his lead farm, and I'll talk a little bit about my lead factory thing, you can't do this without the infrastructure of that automation. You've got to have that automation to process inquiries into the database, to score them, to nurture them, lead qualification, how to route them, and really the whole closed looping reporting coming back with metrics. But automation without real alignment between sales and marketing is not going to do it alone. In a, an Aberdeen study said 56% of the best-in-class companies identified sales and marketing alignment as their number one operational goal. 